Welcome back, Sarah here, and today we are going to film a new pen day video, or depending on time, new pen days. Um, we'll see how we go. If I ramble too much, which if you've watched any of my videos before, you know is a, a high probability. I was going to say possibility, and then I thought I'd be honest and say probability. Um, maybe I'll split it up. But the goal for today is to have a look at and chat about these two pens. Uh, they are both Jinhao's. This is the Jinhao 80. They just released ones with the gold trimmings. So that's what I went with. And this is the Jinhao 82. Um, straight off the bat, I know that I guess people have really strong opinions about, about Jinhao's or some of the Chinese fountain pens and that they're replicas, knockoffs, copies, versions, insert your word here. I am not, like, for example, I don't have a Lamy 2000. I am not purchasing this pen or these two pens to compare them to what they've been based, inverted commas, on. I purchase them because I'm just, I'm actually interested in them as a pen by itself. The idea of these, like, mass-produced fountain pens that, you know, from all accounts um, of reviews I've read, a really good quality and how do they do that at such a low cost as someone who's just getting into fountain pens different sizes and weights and section widths and things like that like I'm still learning about all of that so that's going to be the the intention uh, of these this video or videos if I split it up if you're wanting for example this compared to a, a Lamy 2000 this probably isn't the video for you uh so I think I'll start off with this one. I inked both of them up with Robert Oster Hippo Purple, which is an ink that I'm just playing with at the moment, uh, trying to work out its different characteristics and things. So that's in both of these. And I got both of these pens off AliExpress. I just realized that I'm like talking like this and the pens are out of frame. So let's make sure I'm actually in the camera. I'm going to do a writing sample on a couple of different pages. This is just Claire Fontaine. I have my Stalogy. This is my new content and commonplace for next year, but I've started using it this year. And I thought I would also go on my trusty Oxford notebook with the optic paper. And I finally, it's taken me forever, I've almost finished the notebook. But it has these little, where's the, I don't know, I took the sticker off. See these little um, things in the corner here? There's actually, it's connected to an app called Scribzy and you can take photos of your notes. So I haven't done it yet, but I just finally signed up for an account and I thought I would take a photo at the end and if it's any good, insert it and see how we go. In the UK, uh, I think these Oxford notebooks, the ones with the optic paper are called like are they call like the red books or the red Oxford books, but for cheap fountain pen friendly paper, I can't recommend them enough. Before we do a writing sample, let's just have a look at the pen. Purchased this off AliExpress. I did get it when they were having a sale, so I'll just pop up a little title text with um, the Australian amount I paid and try and do a, a US conversion. I think it was around eight dollars because I got the one with the the gold trim, the the old the now the older version with the silver trim. I think go down to like six bucks Australian. It's got that black mattish finish. It's just a plastic body. It has a nice weight to it. This pen, gold clip. Uh, it's it's not stiff, but doesn't feel like the most stable. I'm not really someone who clips my pens, so that doesn't really matter to me. I did, no, I do notice that your fingerprints uh, really do show up, especially if like you've got, like I think I just had a bit of moisturizer on my hand, but not much, but it shows up quite a bit. So it is a pen that's going to pick up a lot of that. A little gold insert in there. I got this in an extra fine. Snap cap, is that right? Yep, I always forget the different names. Let's see if I can bring this one into focus. Extra fine chin how. So 
first impressions uh, fits nicely in my hand. That's what it's like capped. It feels a bit back heavy for me capped, but I do have small hands. One thing I did notice when I got this pen is um, comes with a cartridge converter, which is great. This one was actually, I'm not going to pull it out because there is a bit of ink right up the top there, uh, was really hard to get out. So it fits, but like full on fits, which is great in terms of it being secure while, once it's in there. But it, it does make me go, okay, well, if I need to take it out, if there was a touch of ink left in there, you know, it's going to go absolutely everywhere because you have to use quite a bit of force. Otherwise, there are no issues. However, this pen uh, didn't uh, write straight out of the box. It was um, hard starting, you know, I was doing the converter, trying to flood the feed a little bit, uh, and in the end I had to spend a good 10 minutes applying quite a bit of pressure to the, to the tines. It was almost like they were just completely shut and they just needed to be opened up a little bit you can actually I don't know if you can see in there there's still quite a bit of ink around there from when I was just trying to get ink through before I do a writing sample I will see if I can do a size comparison what's a pen I have easily accessible in here Let's go with a Twisby, quite similar in size, quite similar in weight actually. I always forget what's a push, what's a screw, uncapped, a little bit smaller. So as I said, straight out of the box or plastic wrapping, it, it didn't write, but then once I was able to just get those tines happy, it started to. So in focus there, let's see. Now that was yesterday morning, so we'll see. I'd be interested to see if it writes straight away or if it hard starts again. This, oh, there you go. It's the Jinhao 80. Call that, I guess, a matte black. And this is an extra fine nib. It's not the smoothest writer in the world, but it's a it's really nice to write with. I apply a little bit of pressure. It lies lays down, sorry, what I think is a pretty decent amount of ink. Now let me just write something and bring it up closer. So you can hear a little bit. So I was just trying to screw that one and it, I'm not going to screw it because it's a snap cap. So that's what the Jinhao 80 looks like. For comparison, what I'm going to do, so this is um, why don't we go like this? And they are different colours, but that is a Chinese extra fine. And then this is a Japanese extra fine. And you know what? What, there's like $65, dollars difference between these pens. Probably especially in the extra fine, but maybe not. Like, it's not like one feels absolutely awful. This still feels really nice to write with. A little bit of feedback, but as to be expected with an extra fine nib. I always um, struggle getting into the figure eights. But quite nice. But to show you those two, that's Robert Oster Hippo Purple Dye Mine Oxbow.
we turn and look. Some ghosting, no bleed through and no feathering either. Why don't we see how it goes on what is cheap fountain pen paper? So let's see here so we can see what it looks like on the other side. It actually feels really nice writing on this paper. So as I said before, it is laying down a little bit more, but not in a bad way. I don't mind it. It almost like gives it a little bit of character. I have been told that this ink can be a really nice shader. Probably not going to see that in an extra fine nib, but this is what it looks like on that optic paper. Nothing. That's what I love about this paper. Really nothing to see there at all, which is pretty incredible. So the last paper sample, those are those two that I want to look at. And this one, it's always a bit tricky because allergy ghosts like nothing else, but I just really do love them as notebooks. So I was just finding my place there. So the last notebook that I'm going to test on is Stalogy paper. Stalogy paper goes like crazy. It can bleed through as well, but I love the notebooks. I'm always, you know, trying to find pens that do, do work with this. So this is again, The Jin How 80 Extra Fine Nib. And it's Hippo Purple, not Purple Hippo. Now, on this paper and the Claire Fontaine, I do get a touch more feedback. It's not unpleasant. It doesn't feel scratchy or like I'm having to work really hard. It's just noticeably different compared to this, which is a coated paper. So, looking now, there is ghosting there. Actually, possibly one or two little tiny spots of bleed through, but like is half bleed through a thing? Just coming up there. So, that is the the Jin Hao 80. First thoughts, and I haven't yet done a long writing session with this. Uh, I will, and uh, I can report back. But my first thoughts are that for a a cheap pen, it writes really well. I think as well for a cheap, you know, for a pen that costs this much, that it actually comes with a converter is great. And it's um, the converter works really well. My issue wasn't with the converter; it was just with how tough it is to get out of um, the, the section there. I think that's incredible. I am intrigued. I don't know if it's just about scale that, that so Jin Hao makes so many that they can do it for such a low cost. I'd be interested to see what uh, wider nibs are like because this does lay down, depending on the paper, you know, a decent amount of ink. It feels really nice in the hand. It didn't write coming straight out of the box, but I just really what I was doing was just like applying some pressure and just having to get the tines working a little bit. And after around 10 minutes of doing that, I didn't have to get any tools, nothing like that. It, when I say working on it, I literally mean probably more like fiddling with the pen and a notepad. I think it looks nice. Yes, it is. It looks very, very similar to a pretty famous pen. That aside, I think it's a nice looking pen. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, taking something like this to work as an everyday carry because it, it did, you know, cost me under $10. I'm trying to think of a comparison. If, you know, you look at this compared to, actually, I have one in here, to a Platinum Preppy, another, I guess, an Asian fountain pen, Japanese, I think, Platinum. 
this one writes better than this one. It has a, a nicer writing experience. It's smoother. However, I would say aesthetically this, this one looks nicer. It looks more professional. This one comes with a converter. This one I'm, I, I haven't bought a converter. I'm just rinsing out a cartridge. But, you know, converters cost money. This one's heavier. They both seem to secure pretty well. Uh, this has never dried out or anything. This one did work beautifully straight out of the box, so that is something. But for like, yeah, 7 or $8, I think that's pretty, pretty great. They do have one that's got like a matte black clip, which I think would be kind of cool to get as well. And with the gold trimmings, there's like a dark green, a dark burgundy and a dark blue which look really nice as well. So all in all, I think if you're like me and you are still discovering really what's working for you, really what's not, you're also wanting to play around with pens a little bit as you look to buying more expensive pens, you know, that's the first time I've ever had to really play with a nib and, and get it to work. And I would much rather do that on an $8 pen than an $80 pen. And, you know, it worked this time, but there will there will be a time that I mess up. So, you know, the first I actually, I just bought um, a bunch of vintage fountain pens because I just want to try and restore some and get into that. I would rather try and, you know, micro mesh polish out a, a scratch on an $8 plastic or acrylic body than one that's much more expensive. But even if it's, and that's, a, I've gone on a bit of a tangent there, I guess, about restoration. But in terms of the pen itself, writes really nicely, feels nice in the hand. And from a price comparison, I think that looks better than that, even though this one writes better. So I guess it's what are you what are you in the mood for? What do you what do you prefer? Now I've had to stop and start this video a couple of times. If not, let's continue with this. I'm actually interested, like I've got YouTube Studio and that tells you the average duration that people watch your videos, but it's skewed because if someone clicks on it and goes, oh, no, this isn't for me and only watches five seconds and someone watches the whole video, you know, it does the the mean of it all. Um, I would be really interested to know from you guys who do stick around, <laughs> uh, do you prefer the longer, chunkier videos, you know, upwards of 15, 20, 30 minutes, or do you prefer things under 15 minutes, you know, one pet at a time, kind of getting get out type of thing? If you have a preference, please let me know because I am happy to accommodate. The next pen, I'm actually just going to get a sip of water. Oh, man, my hay fever. I don't know if anyone watching is from uh, Melbourne or Victoria. My hay fever at the moment is going wild. It's so bad. So we'll start back with the Claire Fontaine. But the next pen I bought, I actually bought three pens from AliExpress, but one hasn't arrived yet. Uh, but these, and it's not a Jin Hao. This is the Jin Hao 82. Again, rep looks very similar to a Sailor pen. Putting that aside, I just wanted to see what a I wanted to see what this kind of pen felt like. It's kind of like short, shorter, but wider. And I wanted to see how that was in the hand. Again, it is on the heavier side, similar to a Twisby, if not a tiny bit heavier. Size wise, might we just go, you can see smaller than the Jin Hao. Just grabbing the ones that are next to me now. Screw cap. Smaller again. As someone with small hands, always happy to find smaller pens and pens that I can write with capped. That actually feels really great in the hand. It's not back heavy. It feels nice. I don't know if you had really large hands. I think you would probably definitely need to, to cap it. That actually feels quite comfortable for me as well but both options feel really good. This is, the color is called Sky Blue. It's a really, really pale, pale blue. Probably 
is clearer next to like white paper. It's more like a, a tint. It is, it looks like a cloudy sky, <laughs> sky blue is what I'd call it, not a bright sky blue at all. This pen as well, I came with a cartridge converter, different to the Jinhao 80. This one fit really well and feels nice. It feels secure in there, but I didn't have to like, you know, really yank at it to get it out. I've jumped around a bit, but looking at the pen from top to bottom. So screw cap does take a few turns, which some people find an issue with. I'm fine with clip. This one feels noticeably more secure than the, the other Jinhao. I don't feel like I'm about to break it. It's got some silver detailing there and it's got the, the Jinhao logo. I got this one in a fine nib. It is a shorter section, probably because it's a, a smaller pen. I, I don't have an issue with that, but if you feel like you need that, like more space, that could maybe start to encroach on where you're placing your hands. My thumb is resting on the threads a little bit. Again, I don't find that intrusive, uh, maybe because it's the bottom, bottom of my thumb pad, I guess, there, but that's not a bother to me. This pen did work straight out of the box. Thumb, something that I did notice, so is, and maybe it's just as, as I'm getting the times working for the first time, is that it, it started off feeling a bit dry and then as I used it more and more and applied different pressure, you know, with quick writing or slower writing, uh, it did get it did get wetter. Sorry, it's jumping in and out of focus there. So this one is the Jinhao 82 sky blue with a fine nib. And why don't I just add that? So that one is extra fine, extra fine, twisty, and that is a fine. So this is laying down quite a bit of ink, and this, I don't know if, they're obviously not flex nibs, but this one almost felt a bit less stiff, is the way I'm going to put it, than the, the Jinhao 80. I could apply a little bit of pressure and get some with little bits. It's not designed to do that, but I, you know, doing that is what actually helped me get the Jinhao 80 working, whereas this, it, it just wasn't as stiff and it feels quite nice. But you can see you get, a, even with this, and this is a, a fine nib under $10 pen, and I'm actually getting little bits of shading there which I think is pretty impressive. Just do it where I lift off. So I'll bring that one up. Uh, it's similar that there is a little bit of feedback. I do find this one smoother than the Jinhao 80. I, I can see myself gravitating to that one more to write with. Looking at line widths, you can see the difference there. It's not too crazy as of a difference. I'm trying to think, you know what, look at the, the H and the A in happy up there and down there. I think that's probably a really obvious difference in the A. You can see thicker there, but nothing crazy. And coming down here, little bits of shading. It's actually not picking it up too much on the camera, but in the brown there's quite a bit. Turning over. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to get my other bits of paper. So got two more here. This is the. Oh, it's interesting that it's just done that. I'll talk about that in a second.
So just as I was writing the word Jin Hao, to me it felt like it was almost about to go dry or hard start. Like there, there was a bit more feedback. So I don't know maybe in the feed if it's maybe like not the most consistent thing or because I didn't put lots of ink in, it's starting to run out. But I do find, and it actually isn't a bad thing, but I have found that at some points it will lay down more ink than others. And I know that is also a description of shading, but it feels different to that. It's actually like I can feel it in the nib of the pen that it it's like maybe working a touch harder. And I really don't think it is my hand pressure. Again, it's not a negative thing and it's very, very nitpicky. But I think if, if you, you know, you're considering purchasing this pen, I'm trying to give the best and most detailed descriptions of, of what I'm experiencing. And that is something, but it's not a negative. It's just maybe a little quirk. I'm trying to remember how much this one cost me. I'll chuck it up again, but I think it was even cheaper than the 80. I think maybe it was like $6 and it came in a, a variety of colors. Comparing them there, the extra fine actually looks darker and like it's laid down a bit more ink. And I think that's the case, less ghosting there and no bleed through. I am enjoying this one more. Fine, on our final piece of paper, let's see what it's like on the coated paper. I think it sounds less scratchy as well across the different papers. Let's try and write this. I know it's a bit messy, but fast to see if it can keep up. It feels smoother. Now, it is a different nib. It is a fine nib. And maybe that's just where that little bit more smoothness is coming in. But when I, I'm not describing this one as scratchy, I'm describing it around feedback. So maybe this has a little bit less feedback, is a little bit more smooth. But yeah. Of the two, I feel like I am gravitating towards that one more. And again, nothing. So I'll do a close up for you. They're the two different pens I got. This one is matte black. With gold trim. I don't know if you can hear that little bit of feedback there help if I'm in focus in the camera. And this one is sky blue. I got both of these from AliExpress. I'm trying to remember what store, I think I may have even got them from the Jinhao official store on there. They were both under $10 Australian and both included a converter, which I think is pretty great. Would I say myself buying them again? This one, yes, definitely. I'm really enjoying it. This one, I want to do some longer writing samples with. I don't know. I feel bad. It's not that I have something bad to say about this pen. It's just that I, because I got them both at the same time, you know, you just gravitate to one over the other and this is the one I'm gravitating to. With both of them, I would be interested because they do, you know, they, they're heavier than this one, for example. I wonder if you're writing pages and pages, would you get a little bit of, of hand fatigue? But I don't think it's that heavy. I don't, they are heavier than the Twisby as well. Doesn't feel crazy though, but I would be interested to see. I'd also be interested, you know, does the, I don't want to say like, cheapness but I'm trying to think of a better word does the mass production therefore lower cost and maybe they're not as finessed once you really put them through their paces and you know some pens you know will last years and years and years or forever are these not so much are they going to maybe break down after a less amount of use to be seen uh, but you know converters can be changed you know, everything else can be changed anyway. If you look after the pen, I can't see why that would be the case. That's going to be it for this video. 
my hands actually while I was holding this. I don't know if you can pick that up there. Uh, I don't know if I have a little bit of something or even just a little bit of sweat, but you can really see it picks it up. Plastic on the like the grooves there. You see that in the light on there. It almost looks a bit oily. And my hands aren't oily, so it's just oh, I mean, you know, everyone has oil on their hands, but that's something that I could see bugging me a little bit, to be honest, that the pen kind of looks constantly dirty is going to make me not want to pick it up as well, whereas you don't you don't see it on the other types of plastic as much, something to consider. So as I said, I'll pop up the little, the little bits of um, pricing and conversions throughout the video and I will take a photo of this and put it up now to show you that Scribzy app because maybe that could be really handy. Let me know if you guys have these pens. Do you like them? Do you have a preference between them? What other colours of this one do you like? Because I can definitely see myself getting more. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you could hit the like and subscribe, I'm always really, really happy to hear from you guys as well. It, it can make my day. I hope every, everyone has a really happy and safe holiday season. I'm not sure when this video will be coming out, but I think it'll be pretty close to the new year. So I hope everyone has lots of fun, but yeah, also really does stay safe. And I can't wait, wait to uh, hop back on here soon and have a play with pens uh, for you guys again. See you all later. Bye.